Om Gyanti Mirandasya Gyananjana Salakaya Chaksun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurve Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobhistam Staptitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Bande ham shi guru shi yuta padikamalam shi gurun vaishnavam sha shi rupam sagrajatam sahaganad raganatam bitam tajivam sadvaitam sarvadutam parijana sahitam krishna chaitanya devam Sri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishakam Vitamsya Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale Sri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swamin Iti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nirvise sa sunyavari, pastyatya de satarine. Nama om Vishnu padaya, Krishna prestaya bhutale. Sri makte bhakti siddhanta saraswati iti namine. Sri varshavanavi devi, daite krispabdaye. Krishna sambandha vigyanam. Daine prabhave namaha Madur ojvala prema dhyā Sri rūpā nuga bhakti dhā Sri gaura karuna shakti Vigrahaya namostute Namaste gauravāni Sri mortaye dhīnatārine Rūpā nuga virūrāpā Siddhanta dvanta harine Nama Om Vishnu Padaya, Nama Om Gauda Kishoraya, Saksad Vairagya Murtaye, Vipalamba Sambode, Padambo Jayate Namaham, Namo Bhakti Venodaya, Sachidananda Namine, Gauda Shakti Sarupaya, Rupanuga Parayate. Gauda Vibhava Bhumestvam Nirdhisesa Sajanat Priham Vaishnava Sarva Bhuma Sri Jagannathaya Te Namaha Vancha Kaupa Tarubhischam Kripa Sindhu Pavacha Patita Nam Bhavane Bhyo Vaishnava Bhyo Namaho Namaha Namo Mahavadanaya Krishna Prema Padayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namani Gauda Triste Namaha Panchatattva Makam Krishnam Bhakta Rupa Sarupakam Bhakta Avataram Bhakta Kyam Namami Bhakti Shakti Kam He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Jayatam Sudato Pangor Mama Manda Matirgati Matsarvasya Padambojo Radha Madana Mohano Divya Rinda Kaupa Drumada Sirupan Sisi Ratna Sangas Nisila Govinda Devo Pristali be Savya Manam Smarami Sri Madrasada Rasadam be Vamsi Vanta Tatastitaha Karsan Veno Tatar Gopir Gopinata Te Namaha Tapta Kanchita Gaurangi Radhe Brindavane Swadi Vrishabhanu Suti Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Mangala means auspicious. Mangala Charanam, the auspicious prayers at the lotus feet of the Lord and of the Lord's pure devotees.
it's a little bit out of order in this book because you're supposed to say, Te Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate, and then you do Jayatam Sudato Pangor Mamamanda Matir Guti. But they put that one at, in, a, in a different place. When Prabhupada, when Prabhupada does it, he's, he's saying, he says it in the order I did it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. <laughs> Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 8, Chapter 16, The Peyo Vrata Process of Worship, Text Number 21. Savidayati te kaman Harir dina, dina nu kampanaha Amoga Bhagavan Bhaktir Netareti Matir Mama Savidayasti Te Kaman Harir Dina Nu Kampanaha Amoga Bhagavad Bhaktir Netareti Matir Mama Savida yasyasti te kamhan Harir dina nu kampanaha Amoga bhagavad bhaktir Natareti matir mama Ladies, mm-hmm. give me an Ashman cup with a spoon. Janava. Sa. He. Vasudeva. Vidya Yasti will undoubtedly fulfill Te your Kaman desires Hari the Supreme Personality of Godhead Dina unto the poor and Ukampana very merciful Amoga 
infallible. Bhagavad Bhakti. Devotional service unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Na, not, itara, anything but Bhagavad Bhakti. Iti, thus, mati, opinion, mama, my. So uh, Kishap is continually to instruct his wife uh, Aditi in taking shelter of the Supreme Lord in order to get her desire fulfilled. Translation, the Supreme Personality of Godhead who is very merciful to the poor will fulfill all of your desires. For devotional service unto him is infallible. Any method other than devotional service is useless. And that is my opinion. <laughs> Purport. <clears throat> there are three kinds of men who are called Akama, Moksha Kama, and Sarva Kama. One who tries to get liberation from this material world is called Moksha Kama. One who wants to enjoy this material world to its fullest extent is called Sarva Kama. And one who has fulfilled all his desires and has no further material desires is called a kama. A bhakta has no desire. Sarvapadi vinir muktam tad paratvena nirmalam. He is purified and free from material desires. The moksha kami wants to achieve liberation by merging into the existence of the supreme Brahman. And because of this, the desire to merge into the existence of the Lord, he is not yet pure. And since those who want liberation are impure, what to speak of the karmis who have so many material desires? Nonetheless, the Shastras say, Akamo sarva karmo vaha moksha karma udharati tirena bhakti yogena yajeta purusham param whether one desires everything or nothing, or desires to merge into the existence of the Lord, he is intelligent only if he worships Lord Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, by rendering transcendental loving service. This is from the Bhagavatam 2.3.10. Kishapa Muni saw that his wife Aditi had some material desires for the welfare of her sons, but still he advised her to render devotional service unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead. In other words, everyone, regardless of whether he is a kami, jnani, karmi, jnani, yogi, or bhakta, should invariably take shelter of the lotus feet of Vasudeva and render transcendental loving service unto him, so that all that his desires will be duly fulfilled. Krishna is dina anukampana. He is very merciful to everyone. Therefore, one wants to fulfill his material desire. Krishna helps him. Of course, sometimes if a devotee is very sincere, the Lord, as a special favor to him, refuses to fulfill his material desires and directly blesses him with unalloyed, pure devotional service. In the Chaitanya Chari Tamrita, Madhya 22, 38 and 39, Krishna kahe apma bhajya maga sukha amrita chari vishya mage ebara mukha Ami vigya e mukye visha kena diba sachana namrita dia vishaya bulaiba. Krishna says, if one engages in my transcendental loving service but at the same time wants the opulence of material enjoyment, he is very, very foolish. Indeed, he is just like a person who gives up ambrosial to drink poison. Since I am very intelligent, why should I give this fool material prosperity? Instead, I shall induce him to take the nectar of the shelter of my lotus feet and make him forget his illusionary material enjoyment. If a devotee maintains some material desire and at the same time very sincerely desires to engage at the lotus feet of Krishna, Krishna may directly give him unalloyed devotional service and take away all his material desires and possessions. Hari Bo. 
There goes the husband, there goes the wife, there goes the house, there goes the mortgage, there goes the car, somebody stole the computer, uh, everything is gone, what's left? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Hare, I'm rich, I'm rich, I got everything. This is the special favor to the devotees. Otherwise, if one takes to devotional service but still has material desires to fulfill, he may become free from all material desires as Dhruva Maharaj did, but this may take some time. However, if a very sincere devotee only wants Krishna's lotus feet, Krishna directly gives him the position of Sudha Bhakta, Bhakti, unalloyed devotional service. Omagyan timirandasya ganajana salakaya chaksun militam yanetas mai sri guravena maha siyala prabhupad ki jai. Hmm. So, Krishna doesn't interfere with your desires. But sometimes when he sees you have mixed desires for devotional service and for, for material life, he uh, will... And he'll interfere with your ability to fulfill your material desires. This is special mercy. It doesn't come for everyone. Usually Krishna will fulfill your desire. But if you really want Krishna, sincerely want Krishna, then Krishna will arrange for you to your material desires just fall apart. <laughs> of course, we don't like that. We think, oh, I want both. Let me have, I want, what they say, I want my cake and I want to eat it too. It's that old thing. I want everything at the same time. But these are contrary. Material desires are contrary to devotional service because devotional service is spiritual desires, which are the desires of the soul and not the desires of the mind and the body. <laughs> And so Krishna will help you fulfill your spiritual desires if you're sincere and you actually want to take shelter of him. And so Prabhupada gives the example of his own life, how Prabhupada was, when Prabhupada was in uh, India, he met his spiritual master, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, and very sincerely took up Krishna consciousness. But he was still in householder life. And so, but Krishna had a special mission for him. And he was still trying to keep his household together. And he also, Prabhupada was a very big, successful businessman. Uh, it was written in his astrological prediction that he would be as rich as the richest man in India, Bila at the time, yeah. Prabhupada had that uh, karma and he would have been extremely wealthy. And he had his own business. He had a chemical business. And he had started his own business from that, from that business. And it was very successful. Prabhupada's business was very successful. He had a family, had a wife. Everything was going well. But then after meeting his spiritual master and engaging in devotional service, something changed after a while. Uh, his business started to fail. His uh, wife was not so cooperative anymore. <laughs> and so things just kept changing. And then Prabhupada, one thing after another, and then his wife actually, she took his Bhagavatam and took it to the trade market and traded it in for tea biscuits. Because in those days the British were very prominent in introducing tea. And four o'clock in the afternoon was tea time. <laughs> so everyone would stop work and sit down to a cup of tea and then they introduced biscuits after that. So you have to have tea and biscuits together. So, so Prabhupada's wife was very much affected by that. She, she liked tea and biscuits. So she ran out of biscuits and she ran out of money. So she took Prabhupada's Bhagavatam and traded it for tea biscuits. <laughs> when Prabhupada came home, he was, where's my Bhagavatam? 
oh, uh, you know, well, I needed these tea biscuits, you know, so she didn't really have a good excuse. Papa was a little upset because she was always chasing after tea biscuits. <laughs> so finally Prabhupada said to her, tea, no, no, she said to him, <clears throat> no, Prabhupada said to her, or was it? No, probably yet. <clears throat> no, Prabhupada said to her, tea or me? You can choose me or the tea. And she said, Kind of like in a joking way, she said tea. <laughs> and Prabhupada thought, okay, there's the, there's the sign. And after that, he left his family life. <laughs> and then he went to Vrindavan. And of course, and there was some activities in between. And he stayed in Vrindavan for about five years, living at the Radha Damodar temple. And he writes one beautiful poem he goes down the list of all the family members and friends that he knew, and he says, oh, and what did he say in that famous poem? Oh, just a long list of names. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> and just time has taken everything away. It's everything Now it's just a long list of names. And I sit alone in Vrindavan, and I am happy. <laughs> And then he then he started to build his mission. And Prabhupada talks about his own life as an experience that Krishna took everything away. <coughs> and Prabhupada quotes that verse from the eighty eighth chapter in the Bhagavatam, the tenth canto of the eightieth the eightieth chapter of the tenth canto. Krishna says, If I favor someone, I give them everything. But if I really favor them, I take everything away. <laughs> so, we have a choice to be favored or really favored. <laughs> so, taking everything away means all you have left is Krishna. <laughs> There's nothing left. <laughs> and that's considered to be really favored because when you have Krishna, you have everything. Because Krishna is is everything. And Prabhupada, after a while, after coming to America, started his mission, and he had so many followers, he had so many, so much m money, and he was, you know, they were making 60 crores a day just selling books. And so Prabhupada, you know, he, he, Prabhupada showed, you know, Krishna took everything away, but then he gave me everything back. <laughs> He said, I had a wife and a few children. Now I have 300 children and no botheration of a wife. <laughs> so, <laughs> Prabhupada uses the example. He talks there about his early life, how Krishna just one thing after another. And Prabhupada was trying to preach in India, thinking I want to establish something. But he had already received twice the message from his spiritual master to go to the West and preach. But Prabhupada thought, let me establish something in India first. And so he got a little started, and he started, he opened this place in Jhansi, right near Delhi. And he got a, a building. But the building was uh, a rental. And it was a governor who had given it, but the governor's wife, she wanted the building for a sewing club for ladies. <laughs> so she had influence, and Prabhupada lost the building to the sewing club. <laughs> so Prabhupada talks about how everything, everything he tried to do in India failed. Prabhupada said, Every, everything, he took my business away, took my family away, he took... Everything I tried to preach in India, why Krishna just... And then I was, then it became clear, yeah, I should go to the West. <laughs> and that was the instruction that Bhakti Siddhanta had given to him in 1922, and again in 1936. Twice he received the same instructions. You are a very intelligent young man. 
you should go to the Western world and preach this message of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So finally he took it up and then he said, when I did that, everything became successful. But not at the first. It was difficult. Prabhupada's health was difficult when he was trying to travel on the boat going across the ocean 39 days on sea. He had to travel on his, you know, it was a, it was a cargo freighter. It wasn't just a, it wasn't a luxury liner. <laughs> it wasn't for, you know, taking people for on vacation. It was just for carrying cargo. But the captain, Mr. Pandya, and his wife, they liked Srila Prabhupada, so they gave him a little cabin in the, in the, uh, on the ship. And you can see there are many stories about that, how Prabhupada had two heart attacks while he was there. He was all alone on John Mastami. He was just, he, he just had one copy of Chaitanya Charitamrita reading it all by himself. So, I mean, he, Prabhupada, every, Prabhupada, had to go through so much, he lost so much, almost his life, just to start this Krishna consciousness movement. He had two heart attacks on the boat, and one when he, and after about a, two years after he got here, 1967, he had the third heart attack. After he had the third heart attack, he really prayed to Krishna. He said, my dear Lord, I have, my mission is not even started. Please give me some more time. Because the astrologer told him that that heart attack, that, that third one, it was due, that was his time to do. He was meant to go at that time. His life was actually up. But Krishna extended his life 10 more years. And during those 10 years, Prabhupada uh, spread Krishna consciousness everywhere around the world. Fast. It was fast. Temples were opening, devotees were being made, books were being printed and distributed, uh, programs were going on, Prabhupada was traveling from country to country, opening temples. It was amazing. Those 10 years from 1967 to 1977, it was like a revolution of Krishna consciousness blossoming all over the world, particularly in America, but also in Europe also. Devotees came here also in 1973, yeah. They they were in you they came in Ljubljana, they went in uh, what is that Belgrade, and that was Yugoslavia at the time, the country was one it was six countries, they were in Sarajevo, and Belgrade and Ljubljana and Zagreb, yeah. they went to all the different the capitals mostly of the capitals of those four countries, and preached, and it was against the law to preach here. <laughs> but people were really opened here. People were really welcoming devotees here. And they had programs, but a few times the police came in and shut, us, shut it down. <laughs> but they wouldn't, take, they wouldn't put the devotees in jail, they just shut it down. And uh, finally, I think um, Belgrade got stopped, Sarajevo Avo got stopped, but the only place was left was Ljubljana. It was still good. <laughs> so now we have a temple here. <laughs> This temple has been come because of the preaching of the devotees in 1973. And you can hear Prabhupada's in one in 1977 Prabhupada is talking to his devotees and they were telling about preaching in about in this area here. <laughs> and Prabhupada's listening. And they were doing public programs and devotees were I mean people were just coming forward and helping. There's one devotee who wrote a book. I don't know if you've seen that book. Did you read it? About the history of this area? Um, no? You didn't read that book? I forgot his name. Uh, but he wrote a book describing all... I read it, and I have it in my library. And he describes what happened here in this area. Preaching and different programs. So it was going on pretty good. But at one point, the devotees had to leave. The police were kicking everybody out, so. Because, you know, it was a strict communist country and religion, preaching religion wasn't so much. But, mm, read the book. 
I found it in the, where did I find it? I found it in the gift shop here. <laughs> did you, anybody see that book? No? Huh? Did you see it? No? It's a real, it's, it's about this big, maybe 70, 80 pages describing all the activities that happened in this area back in the 1970s. But after some time, the devotees had to leave, and I don't think, uh, there was, of course, a few devotees who, who became, there wasn't anybody who got initiated, because Prabhupada never came here. But they planted some seeds and some, you know, some devotees started to chant in those days like that. You should read the history of your whole preaching here. It's really amazing. Especially during the war in the 1990s. Those, there's, a, there's books about the war. There's one devotee, his name was, uh, what was it? Saraba. Sarab, I mean, anybody know Saraba? I, I think maybe uh, Devendra knows Saraba, right? No? Okay, bunch of tattva ki jai. Well, Saraba, he was a, he was a, uh, a devotee in Sarajevo, but he had an identification coming out of Belgrade. <laughs> so he wanted to travel from Sarajevo to Zagreb during the war in the 1990s. And this was the war was going on here. I mean, some of you have been involved with the war. You know all about it. And he, he wrote a beautiful story about what happened, how he made it, actually. He had a backpack, and his, his ID, they couldn't even read his ID. It was kind of blurry. So he really didn't have any ID. And you had, in order to travel, you had to go through different checkpoints during the war. And a lot of times you would get arrested if you who are depending on who you were. But he was he just was determined to get to Zagreb because there was there was a little program going a temple in Zagreb at the time and there was no nothing else happening around. Of course the devotees preached in Sarajevo, they distributed food there also. And he describes how he was, you know, at one point he came to one police place and two policemen were there. And they saw him, so one took out the gun and wanted to sh shot him, to kill him. But he had a backpack on, and they hit the backpack, and the bullet spun around and went back towards the <laughs> the guy who shot. and just missed his friend, because <laughs> there was two police there. And so the, the, this one complained to the other one, what are you doing, you know, he almost killed me. <laughs> So um, he he chanted Hare Krishna for weeks nonstop. He kept chanting the holy name nonstop, and then he went through. And then one time he got on the truck. He got through one checkpoint. When he got on the other side, the police found him and said, and they said to the other police, "How did he get through here?" Yeah, he's chanting Hare Krishna. They didn't know that. <laughs> So they took him to the police station, and then one police officer said, you know, we could kill you, <laughs> he said. And, he, and then he said back to them, well, yes, you can kill me, and that would not be good for me, and it would not be good for you either. <laughs> That's what he told them. <laughs> I know him. I met him. He, he actually gave me this story. He's a devotee now in America, and he's doing... Puja in in, uh, in Washington D.C. Tall devotee, and uh, he chanted all the way. Went through so many checkpoints, got got put back a few times, but he never stopped chanting a Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And because of that, he made it all the way to Zagreb. They couldn't believe it when he got to Zagreb. How he made it? How did you do it? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. And those of you who know, I mean, the war was pretty heavy at the time, especially in Sarajevo and that, in Bosnia. Mm. Bosnia and parts of Croatia, the war was heavy. In Slovenia, there was a, the war was only, what, two days or ten days? Somebody said two, was it two days? Two, three 
two days, two three days here. Yeah, so this area didn't get hit with the war at all. It was mostly in uh, you know the southern parts of Croatia, and then of course Serbia and Bosnia. The war was really heavy. So somehow Slovenia, they don't like wars, so they stay out. <laughs> Prahlad Nandamara had said every war that the Slovenian country got in, they lost. So they decided not to get into any more wars anymore. <laughs> That's true, right? Every war you lost. <laughs> so, so might as well quit when you're behind. You know? <laughs> so these are some of the histories anyway. But uh, yeah, so this devotee, he chanted the whole time. I mean, it took him weeks to go from... Sarajevo the Zagreb, but he made it by the holy by the mercy of the holy name, and he had no food. All he had was a backpack and a few personal belongings and an ID that didn't even look like him. <laughs> he made it. Uh, I met him in Hawaii when I was there in Hawaii, and he told me the whole story. And I said, "My God, you got to write that up." And he said, "All right." So he wrote it, and I, he sent it to me as a as I think. If you want it, I can send it to you. It's in this whole story of traveling from uh, Sarajevo all the way up to Zagreb. It's an interesting story. You'll see what he did. So anybody who, who's, who's email, I can send it to Sri Devi and Sri Devi can make it, we can make it available to everyone. It's a nice story. And there are so many stories during the war of devotees risking their lives and Preaching during the war here it was just amazing. And there's so many heroes that came out of this area, mostly in Croatia and Bosnia, more Bosnia. There was one devotee I know. I I saw. I know her. She's in she's in Sarajevo now. Her name her name is Madurangi, not Madurangi. No, what's Madurangi's mother? What's her name? Oh, uh, can't think. Ista Dave is her husband, and can't think of her name. But she was, you know, she was there in Sarajevo, and then the, the Serbian army came, because Serbia was fighting everybody. And the Serbian army came, and they just start shooting and killing everybody. And she got hit in the head with a bullet, but the bullet went up and it went off her head and went up it didn't go in it just hit her in the head and went and ricocheted off and then she was lying and later on she they found that she was alive she's a really nice devotee she's in uh, i go see her all the time she was here once just recently like really nice devotee what's her name Mm, the disciple of Indrajumna Maharaj. Now her name's on my phone, but it might take too long to look for it. <laughs> so yeah, so I, you know, there's so many devotees here that were in the war that got involved with. Uh, preaching during the war, and especially in Bosnia, they were doing food distribution to people who were in, during the war, because the war was really heavy in that area, really heavy, and also parts of Croatia, too. But devotees were never dissuaded. They kept their Krishna consciousness going, and they, they, and they were preaching. They were risking their lives just to preach Krishna consciousness during the war. And now, because of that, and we have so we have so many nice devotees here. Temples, preaching is going on. So it's interesting. So Krishna consciousness here it says that Krishna is very merciful. He knows what is your real desire, and uh, if you want material happiness, then he'll give it to you. But if you really want him then he'll take away everything material. Yes, we have, 
I think I'm the wrong person to give the class. I think maybe Sri Devi could give the class. She can speak from realizations. Yeah. I never liked the material world anyway, so Krishna consciousness was just perfect for me. I never had any success in the material world, nothing. I was a complete failure. <laughs> Whatever I did, I failed. <laughs> so I thought there must be some other way to succeed. So and I tried spiritual life and it seemed like that was my destiny. <laughs> so, um, yeah, you know, I got, uh, I was lousy in school. <laughs> I never got any good marks. I got the lowest mark grades. I got left back in classes. I even failed in my graduation. I had to wait another year to graduate. Oh, everything just went wrong. <laughs> I had no material qualifications. Still don't. I don't even know how to, you know, tie my shoe. That's why I get shoes without the laces. You know. <laughs> <laughs> So, but somehow Krishna consciousness is, Lord Chaitanya is very merciful. He invites even the Jagais and Madais to come by and try it out. <laughs> but if we want Krishna, then that's, that's the intelligent, because those who, those who are actually intelligent will understand that there's nothing in this material world worth chasing after. Even if you get some success and getting what you want in the material world, and then you have to lose it anyway. <laughs> it's just time takes it away. So the material world works in such a way is that you can't be happy here, no matter how hard you try. It's Krishna's arrangement. So the living entity doesn't want to stay here, but looks for ways to get out. But the foolish materialists will think, Oh, I tried to be happy this way, it didn't work, but let me try another way, like that. So they try another way, and if that doesn't work, then they think, well, maybe I'm just not doing it right. I have to try another way, right? So I'll try that way. It's, it's just the wrong person I'm with, or I'm, maybe I'm in the wrong place in the, on the globe. <laughs> maybe I just switch locations, it'll be better. <laughs> But Prabhupada says, wherever you go, you take your mind with you. <laughs> so that's the problem. It's not the place, it's the mind. <laughs> so yeah, so the chase after material happiness is foolish because there's nothing there. Yeah. And Vyapati, one of the great um, poets after the appearance of Lord Chaitanya. He says, material happiness is like a drop of water in the desert. Chapala Sukala, Bajahu Remana Sri Nanda Nandana, Abhaya Charana Rindure, Dulava Manava Janana Satsange, Pohoreva Vindure, Sita Atapa Patapurijana, Edini Jagi Ray. Shravana Kirtana Smarana Vandana Pada Sevana Dasare. <laughs> Chapala Sukala. Chapala Sukala means a drop on a a drop of water on a lotus leaf. If you know what a lotus leaf is like, it has a waxy coat on it. It's it's like nothing stays on the lotus. When the lotus comes out of the water, it's dry because no water can stay on the lotus because the, we, the, the leaves are waxy. So if you put a drop of water on the lotus leaf, it goes off, just fast because it's, it's a slippery substance. So that's why he says, Bhajan Govinda Das is singing this prayer that the happiness in material life is like a drop of water on a lotus leaf. So some devotees decided to try that out. They got a lotus leaf and they put some water on just to see if it could stay on there. Didn't work. 
So that's the happiness in the material world. And, but then Vyapati do, does say there is some happiness in the material world. But he explains that when you're in a desert and you are thirsty and you haven't had water for a while, you're thinking, where can I find water? You want water really bad and you're looking, looking, and because the desire for water is so strong, you actually think you see water. But what do you see? It's called a mirage. <laughs> a mirage is the, the reflection of the sun off the sand on the desert, and it creates this image of a water pond. And you think, oh, wow, I found water. But then when you go, you pick it up, just enough, some more sand, that's all. <laughs> that's all. So that drop of water, and some, if somebody, if you're in the desert, and someone says, hey, I got a drop of water for you. Here, drink it to your full satisfaction. You might think, this person is really nonsense. He's just making my life worse. A drop won't do anything. If you're thirsty, right? It makes you more thirsty, that's all. So that's, so that's the happiness in the material world, is a drop of water in a desert. What is that drop? Family life. <laughs> Society, friendship, and love. This little bit of drop that comes by that. But then again, like in Chapala Sukala, it's like a drop of water on a lotus leaf. And sometime soon it will it'll be gone like that. So don't try to be happy in this material world because it's not possible. <laughs> you just waste your time, and which is very, the most valuable thing. Become Krishna conscious. Make, there's a beautiful prayer to Krishna, my dear Lord. Uh, whatever you have to do to bring me to your lotus feet, I'm willing to accept. Do whatever you have to do. Sincerely make that prayer, and Krishna will start working. Some devotees made that prayer, and then Krishna starts working, and they say, oh my God, what's happening? <laughs> oh no, wait a minute, Krishna, wait a minute, I'm going to have to go back in time and retract that prayer, you know. I didn't sign the paper. <laughs> so yeah, then they, Krishna started, you know, taking everything away, and then you're thinking, what did I do? <laughs> but the process of Krishna consciousness is wherever you are, whatever you have, maintain that and just don't try to increase it, but just be engaged in devotional service, that's all. Don't try to further your material happiness by working to increase it in different ways. Simply Stay fixed in what you have right now materially and just engage in devotional service. And Krishna will gradually bring you closer and closer. And then, when you become Krishna conscious, many times Krishna gives you everything. He gives you. He gives you so many material things, you think, what am I going to do with it all? <laughs> but because you don't really want them, you want Krishna, and you're satisfied with Krishna. Krishna just wants to reciprocate. Oh, here, take something. Just like when with Prahlad Maharaj. After Nishringadev killed Harani Kashipu, the father of Prahlad, Prahlad was offering beautiful prayers to Nishringadev. And at one point, Lord Nishringadev was so pleased with Prahlad, out of affection for Prahlad, he said, I want to give you something, ask for anything. But Prahlad Maharaj said, my dear Lord, there's nothing I want to want from you. I simply want to engage in your devotional service, that's all. But the Lord was so pleased with Prahlad that he said, take something. But then Prahlad said, all right, if you want to give me something, then just liberate my father. <laughs> and then the Lord said, you don't even have to ask. It's he's already liberated. <laughs> Simply by being killed by the Lord, he attained liberation. And then the Lord kept going, persistent. Please take something, Perlad. And Perlad said, 
all right, Lord, if you want to give me something, then let me stay in this material world and uh, just preach to these fools and rascals who have made a humbug civilization here. In other words, let me uh, stay here and preach to the conditioned souls if you want to give me something. And when when the Shringadev heard that, he was so happy that his the Lord's heart actually melted in love for Pallad when he, when he saw how much Pallad was selfless in his devotional service. Five-year-old boy. He had reached... He was a Mahabhagavat. He had reached the topmost stage of bhakti. So, when Prabhupada opened his preaching in in America in 1965, 66, 66 mostly, they got a store, a little store for a place where the devotees could meet and have programs. And it was a it was a shop that closed down. It was called it was a curio shop. And they had all little trinkets and knickknacks and little things that you can't buy in most places. Just kind of like interesting, unusual little things for collectors. So the name of the store was called the Matchless Gift. That was the name of the store. So the devotees took over the store and start. Uh, painting the store and fixing it up, making it into a small ashram. And they start taking the sign down, because there was a big sign on the top of this door saying, the matchless gift. So they wanted to take that sign down. Prabhupada said, no, that sign is perfect. This is what we are giving, the matchless gift, Krishna. <laughs> the gift that cannot be matched. <laughs> And so the devotees left that sign up and it's still there today. You can go still see it, the matchless gift. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. When you get Krishna, you get everything. <laughs> so even if you fail to get Krishna, simply it's worth trying. <laughs> it's worth trying, even if you can't do it. Even if you fall short, because if you become 60% Krishna conscious, then you start 60% in your next life. If you become 80%, you start it with 80%. Whatever you do in, in this life is never lost at the time of death. Whereas material life, you could be you know, a billionaire, have all kinds of riches and wealth and power and followers. Death comes along and zero. You're at zero and you have nothing. So... Krishna consciousness is the only success. Somebody made a, a, a question, they said. They said to the devotees, what happens your whole life, you try to be Krishna conscious and you try to, but you find out it's not really real, it's just fake. <laughs> There's nothing there. You're just acting out of nothing. How would you feel at the end of a life? And the devotee said, great, because the process of Krishna consciousness is fun. <laughs> it's chanting, dancing, even if there's nothing afterwards, <laughs> even if there's no Krishna, still it's nice. <laughs> and material life, you're just working so hard like an ass, trying to get some money for some success, and you're miserable your whole life. <laughs> And you die, and you get nothing anyway. <laughs> so, <laughs> when you compare material uh, success to spiritual success, there's no success materially. It's a waste of time <laughs> and a waste of energy. And time is very valuable. So, those who are actually intelligent and take shelter of the lotus feet of the Lord and chant the holy names of the Lord and engage in devotional service. This is the, pla the platform of success. Otherwise, this material world is just, it's, an, it's more like, it's more like a, I don't know, you go, you go to a, have you ever been to a, and they call it a fun house, you have these little places, 
And you go in there, and you get, and then you walk through it, and then some, some paper mache demon comes out and scares you, and you just jump. And then you look into the mirror, and they have all these crazy mirrors, and you you see yourself being really fat, or really thin, or really small. You've seen that those crazy mirrors. It's called a fun house. Everything is crazy there. So that's the material world. <laughs> it's just like that. So <laughs> you work all so hard in your whole life. You raise a family. You get old, and your children leave you, and they want your money anyway. They don't even care about you. <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> it's just the way life is. And life in this world is just... <laughs> Prabhupada said... Material life means a bunch of thieves all trying to steal the property of something, somebody else. <laughs> and then they're all trying to steal from Krishna. And then when they steal from Krishna, then they try to steal from each other. <laughs> it's called business. <laughs> this is the material world. There's nothing here, really. It's just, just an illusion. It's just like sometimes you see on a, a signboard there's a flashing light and then you see a, a, a nice meal. It's all flashing and it's all different colors and it's trying to attract you to buy the meal. But what it is, it's just a bunch of lights. There's nothing there. <laughs> it's just flashing on and off. Same way, material life is like that. As soon as you chase after it, there's nothing there. You don't get anything. What you get is the trouble that you took to chase after it, that's all. <laughs> so, material life is arranged in such a way as to frustrate the living entity's desire to stay here and to be happy here. And when the living entity finally wakes up, there's nothing but Krishna, and that's where I belong. I belong in the spiritual world with Krishna. Then then you're on your way back, then you have reached success. <laughs> and Krishna will help the living entity come back to him. Krishna will make all the arrangements to bring his devotee back to him. Okay, so this is the glory of devotional service. It is the topmost perfection of knowledge, satisfaction, and happiness. And eternal life and material life is just the opposite. <laughs> Sat Chit Ananda, but here it's uh, Asat, Achit, and Nirananda. It's temporary, there's no knowledge. You go to school and you have to learn all things that you have nothing, they just teach you things you don't even need. You go to school so you can learn some kind of skill, so you get a job, so you can work hard and make money and work like an ass. And then get a wife and a bunch of kids who just want to steal your money anyway. <laughs> Material life is just, it's one problem after another. And Prahlad Maharaj says, if you want to be happy in material, and when you want to be happy, he said, do one thing. This is interesting. This is Prahlad Maharaj. Prahlad Maharaj said, if you want to be happy, do one thing. Stop trying to be happy. <laughs> Can you imagine using that as advertisement? If you want to be happy, we have the formula. Stop trying for it. People will think, what's wrong with this guy? You know, <laughs> We have to keep trying for it. <laughs> But what Prahlad Maharaj is saying, as soon as you stop trying to be happy in a material life, then you can find happiness where it really exists, on the spiritual platform. Anandam buddhi vardhanam patipadam purnam rita svardhanam sarvatma svaparam param vijayate si krishna sankirtanam Anandam buddhi, it's an ocean of, of spiritual happiness, unlimited ocean. Anandam Bhudivardhanam cannot be compared to anything. That's Krishna consciousness. Okay, so thank you. We'll stop here. Any questions, comments?
Three day B. You're still not sure yet. <laughs> when you get to Mayapur, you'll be sure. <laughs> yes, Guru Maharaj, I think so. <laughs> I was just going to say exactly what you said that, uh, of course, devotee understands, you know, there's no happiness and we take to devotional service. No, but we, we don't really understand that. We hmm. think we do, but we're still, we're still looking for material happiness. Hmm. We are. Hmm. Because we think, you know, it's out there somewhere. Hmm. <laughs> I haven't found it yet, but I'll get it. Hmm. Thank okay. you. <laughs> Anybody who finds it, let us know because you can share it with us if you find it. <laughs> when uh, Krishna was with Rukmini, he was teasing Rukmini in different ways to get her angry, just to show her, her love for him in an angry way. But it didn't work. <laughs> she, instead of her getting angry, she's very soft by nature, so she just fainted. And then she says that she fell down like a banyan tree that is cut down by a whirlwind. Krishna realized that his joking with her to get her angry didn't work. <laughs> so... And then she she speaks a, a very powerful voice, a very powerful verse. Anybody have the beta base? Look up this verse. It's spoken by Rukmini. After she she comes back to her her consciousness after Krishna teases her, saying, "You know, why did you choose me? You had so many good choices. You know, you could have took Shishupal. You had so many. You know." You're so qualified. Who am I? I'm just a cowherd. I just play with cows. I don't have any money. <laughs> she was teasing. He was just trying to tell her, you know, you made a mistake by choosing me. And she's just listening, and finally she faints. And then at the end, she speaks this one verse. It's the 10th canto, uh, 60th chapter, verse number 45, 106045. You can read that verse, it's really quite nice. Go ahead. <laughs> it's good trade-in, huh? <laughs> Read the purport, it's pretty good. Purple. Your Lord Krishna's chase wife makes a quite unequivocal statement. He indeed should become one's husband who can remove all fear. Sri Krishna is the real husband for all women at all times. Thus a woman who worships someone else as her husband simply worships a dead body. <laughs> can keep going. <laughs> Bodily gratification. But those who are 
Krishna consciousness, they'll be enlivened and enthused by such absolutely truthful statements. <laughs> okay, and just make sure you're finished. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah, the, the material body is what it is. <laughs> it's just a bag. <clears throat> and it's got all kinds of nice ingredients inside, you know. <laughs> you have to, in order to make it presentable, you have to wash it, and then you have to put all these kind of fragrances on it to make it smell nice, because it really smells bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's just what it is. <laughs> My concern is more that I get attached to this project and this thing and I want this particular outcome and I want this to happen. Those are the attachments that really worry me. Because well, the if, there it's, if it's for Krishna, that's all right. Yeah, for, but not for your own sense gratification. Yeah, that's different. <clears throat> You're attached, you want something, you want to offer something nice to Krishna. So you want to be attached to offering something nice to Krishna. That's Krishna consciousness. But if you want some attachment because you want to get some, some name or fame or some credit for what you do, that's material. Okay, time for breakfast. <laughs> That's the one thing about Krishna consciousness. When everything else fails, take prasad. <laughs> then everything becomes nice again. <laughs> That's why we have prasadam right after the class, you see. <laughs>